Hey guys, so it's been quite a while and so much has changed within Home Assistant and I know I've been away and my last upload is over three years ago but I'm trying to get back into everything. My Home Assistant is still running, still have all the automations and everything running. However, with this, so much things has changed within Home Assistant, I decided I'm going to go in and reset and do a entire reinstall of Home Assist and let's all just start from scratch. So I'm going to do a few of the same videos that I've already did in the past and then in between I will upload some additional videos of things that I haven't covered before. That's just to catch up and make sure everything is still running like it should because a lot of stuff in the interface itself has also changed but I have still been using Home Assistant and has been running smoothly without any issues up until this point. But with that said let's quickly go in and take a look. So real quick, before I do get started, I just want to make a quick note as well that I did create a website. So with all of my videos, as I bring them out, I'll also have a written article available on my website for you guys to go through. And it'll guide you step by step as the YouTube description does not really a lot of formatting, especially when it comes to specific code or items that you can add in there. So with that in the description below, I'll leave a link to the written article where you'll be able to go through and follow along with us as well. So. The first things first, what we're going to need when we are setting up a new installation of Home Assistant, the first thing is going to be your Raspberry Pi. Now, I have a 3D printed case, you can get any type of case or just leave it without a case, however, I wouldn't recommend that. And then you're also going to need an SD card with a SD card reader so you can put it into your computer and flash the firmware. Now, a lot has changed in regards to flashing the firmware. It has become extremely simple for us to go through and flash the firmware. So what we'll do is we'll go through here and you'll see the only thing we actually need to download to be able to flash it is going to be the Raspberry Pi software. So if we go on here, we go down and we can just click on download. Depending on the operating system you use, I'll go ahead and download the one for Windows right here. And I'll just open that right from the download as it is a fairly small file. And once we have that downloaded, we can just go ahead and hit the install button, which will go through and start installing the imager. Once it has finished, it already has this checkbox where it says run Raspberry Pi imager. So all I'll do is I'll just press the finish button right here. And that should bring up the Raspberry Pi imager right here. We need to prepare the SD card. I already have it right here. So I can just go ahead and plug it in right here. And we'll just wait for Windows to pick that up. Once it has been detected, we should be able to select our Raspberry Pi device. In my case, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 4 right here. I wouldn't recommend anything lower than that. Uh, as of lately, Home Assistant has been getting a lot of upgrades and improvements and is getting quite resource intensive. So I wouldn't recommend anything lower than a Raspberry Pi 4 for setting these up. So in the second option right here under the operating systems, we can go ahead and click on choose OS. And right here we can scroll down and if we go a bit down, we'll see we have a, a specific purpose OS right here. And then you'll see that there is one called Home Assistant and Home Automation we can click on. Moving down, you'll see we already have Home Assistant right there. That is really simple. So what we'll do is we'll just select the version of Home Assistant we want. So obviously we don't have a uh, yellow device, so we'll just use Home Assistant for Raspberry Pi 4 or 400. And the last step that we have in here is just to choose the SD card that we have just plugged in to our computer. So we'll click on choose storage. This is only a 16 gig as it's just a demo model. However, 16 gig is a bit small for a general purpose, but for this case, this will just be my demo system. So I don't really mind it being only 16 gig. So we'll go ahead and select that. Click on the next button. It's going to tell us, okay, it's going to format that SD card and delete all of the data. So please make sure that you do have a backup of all that data or that it is a clean SD card that you're starting off with. And I'll just say yes right here. That'll go through and start writing the information to the disk. It'll download the latest image of Home Assistant, write it to the disk, and we'll get back to you as soon as this has finished uh, downloading and writing to the SD card. So there we go, that has been written to the SD card. It is now safe to remove. It took quite a while on my SD card because it's a rather old one. So please make sure that you are using a newer and faster SD card than I, that I've been using. But once that has been completed, we can just go ahead and click on continue. That should be it. So we can just close out the application. And now 
go back to the Raspberry Pi and plug it in there. And so now that I have removed the SD card, I'm going to take my Raspberry Pi and just plug in the SD card into the slot. And the last thing that the last two things that we're going to need is going to be a power supply and then also a Ethernet cable that is connected to your network. You can do it with Wi-Fi as well. It requires some additional steps. However, I would highly, highly recommend not doing anything uh, with Wi-Fi, especially when it comes to home automation. So with the power supply, please make sure that you are using a proper power supply to power the Raspberry Pi, as it is important that it does get enough power as well. So I'm going to go in and plug in my Ethernet cable. And then just for kicks, I'm also going to plug in a HDMI cable not necessary at all for this to work you do not need this you just need power and an ethernet cable once you have plugged in your sd card now to access it all you need to do is if you go right here you'll see you can you should be able to access it give it a couple of minutes obviously it needs to do the initial install go through all the updates and everything that it needs to run but once it is ready you should be able to access it by one of the following links right here obviously in my case this is going to open up my own Home Assistant instance because I did not change the host name of my own one. So what I usually do is I try to find the IP address that is assigned to the another instance that I just installed to the Raspberry Pi. Multiple ways you can do it. The best or the first option is to check in your router to see all the devices that is currently connected to your network. You should see one called Home Assistant and it should give you the IP address if these links doesn't work and then you'll normally just go to the ip address with the port 8123 you'll use a colon right here to access that in my case it's a big hassle trying to plug into my router so normally i'll just use an app on my phone called thing and you'll see that there it shows my home assistant instance and it is installed on ip address for 10.0.0.21 port 123 so what i'll do is right here we can just paste that delete everything in here and type in 10.0.0.21 and hit enter and right here as you can see it is still busy preparing with the installation so give it a couple of more minutes just to get everything up and then we can go ahead and get started so that's going to be it for this one, guys. Once that has been completed, it'll ask you to log in or create an account, select your location and a couple of small items. But that should get you up and running with Home Assistant. In the next couple of videos, we'll go through some initial setup items and add-ons you can go ahead and install in your Home Assistant instance as well. I know there's quite a few changes since the initial videos that I did and I'm trying to get back into it. So I may repeat quite a lot of items that I've already done before, but I'm just getting back into it and making sure the content on my youtube channel is updated as well i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day